or creative as a lot of you know me by. So today I am here to give confessions of a creative slob. A couple of days ago, I stretched my wild self and I published on here, um, a creative slob comes clean on the eve of 2020. And let's talk a little bit about that. It's an oops. I've been reflecting and stewing and brewing for a while now. I do a lot of that. It's part of my DNA and it's, well, it's a habit. So, okay, here goes. I am going to give you my first confession right now. I am always busy. Busy, busy, busy. And my worst habit, or probably one of my worst traits, is procrastination. I will put it off if I possibly can. And I can find a whole lot of ways to do that. I am busy looking at other artists' feeds on Instagram, looking at Pinterest. I am busy researching about my next new project or my next great idea. And even occasionally, I am actually busy feeding my creative soul into my studio, actually making something. So as the new decade approaches, I fear that I didn't get as much accomplished in this past 10 years that I imagined back on the eve or the first day of 2010. Darn it. So I have decided I don't want to die with my art still inside me. I know that's kind of scary thing to say for some people, but literally, you know, I just, I have so much in there that I want to create and I want to do, and I want to share with you because I love teaching and I love helping people. And that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And I hope you will, will know that as we get to know each other better as the year progresses. Do you even relate to that or feel the same way sometimes that, that you've wasted? I don't want to say I have regrets because the past 10 years have been pretty good. Ups and downs like everybody's life. But I do have some moments where I think, gosh, I should have done more. I should have made more books. I should have created more art. I should have been in that studio every day doing something, anything. And I wasn't. And that's what I want to fix in this decade. So as we head into this new year and the new decade, I'm determined to reach into my dreams and my imagination. Oh, 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 that ever so grand daydreaming imagination. And I want to create, design, and develop as well as nourish and maintain a personal daily creative practice. Is that something you're interested in? Okay, here's another confession time. I am really good at the create and the design and the development part. I am not so good at the nourish and maintain part of a daily creative practice or much of anything. Remember, I'm a good procrastinator, probably a master procrastinator. And I'm also a master dreamer. So I spend a whole lot of time making plans, plenty of plans, great plans, plans that might have even made me a lot of money at some time. I have plans on paper. I have plans on notebooks. I have plans in journals. I have so many plans that I've forgotten a lot of them. I hate that. So it's a pile of kind of broken dreams or perhaps I could put that a little bit better, like the land of unfollowed through upon possibilities. Does that sound good? <laughs> That's a tongue twister. I'm going to say it again. The land of unfollowed through upon possibilities. 
Okay, so I have come up with this idea of turning myself from a dreamer into a doer in 2020. Hashtag DID 2020. That's cool, right? <laughs> I think of myself as a creative. Heck, what's my nickname? Creativa, good heavenly days. And I even call myself in my bios a possibilitarian. So if I'm going to truly walk my talk or live my vision of my artful self, I need to step up my game. I don't want another decade or even a year or even a single day to go by without tapping deeply into my artful creativity. I want to go on to an artistic journey as wide as my soul can possibly stretch. I want to dig deep. I want to unearth my creativity in new and joyous ways. I want to turn this dreamer into a doer. And I want to take you with me. So let's get into the pep talk part of this. <laughs> I hope you'll stay with me for that part. Instead of beating myself up for not following through or becoming creatively complacent in the 2010s, I want somehow to make an unbreakable date with myself every single day. Yep. <laughs> you heard me every single day in 2020. And you might ask, Rebecca, how are you going to do that? How can you possibly do that every single day? Well, here's the scoop. I have been cleaning out the bookery or clearing, and that's my nickname for my little tiny bedroom, spare bedroom studio uh, throughout the month of December. It is part of my cleaning journey that I have been doing in the past year or so. Uh, but that's another whole story entirely. I am simplifying. But remember, I am a creative slob here. So, and I don't mean that as messy necessarily. A lot of my stuff is in a place where I can find it. Some of it isn't, but most of my stuff is where I can get it to it readily. It's so I'm an organized creative slob. And when I'm talking about creative slob, I'm not talking about dirty <laughs> in any way. That's not the slob part. I mean, the procrastination is the darn part of it that I'm talking about. So to actually make this happen every day, um, cleaning the studio and clearing my house and clearing my life, I had to play games with myself. Like I had to go into the studio for 20 minutes. I had to set a timer. And I had to work. And that was it. That was doable. And it was doable for me. I don't know whether it works for everyone, but it was doable for me. The first time I did this, I actually amazed myself. I cleared out all the stuff that was on the floor in front of the closet. So now I can actually reach the shelves that are in the closet where my paints are stored and my mediums and some of my other artful supplies are. I can reach them without having to step over and break an ankle to do that. So as the timer started to chime, uh, it became one of those like magical light bulb moments, I guess you'd call it. Look what I accomplished in 20 minutes. Good grief, Rebecca, 20 minutes. So I was in that studio doing a happy dance. Uh, so that was fun for me. I had cleaned that path out. I was dancing and my non-action taking mind really kicked into overdrive about what I could make happen in 2020. And I saw all these 20s, you know, numbers going through my head, not math, but the year 2020 and 20 minutes. So I, it, since it worked for me on the clearing, I thought maybe it could work for me also on the creating. Am I on to something here? 
I hope so. I hope you agree with me. There are so many 20s in 2020. So I figured that I could challenge my artful self, Creativa, to walk into that studio every day, set a timer for 20 minutes, and create. Not clean or clear, not dwell or stew about it being perfect, just pick up a paintbrush or a pen or a stencil or a rubber stamp and create something. Just anything. Doesn't have to be perfect. At the end of 20 minutes, I can do several things. I can hit the repeat button and continue for another 20 minutes. Don't you love that repeat timer on your phone? Or I can walk away knowing that I contributed to my daily creative practice, right? That's number two. Or I can vow to come back for another 20 minutes later today if I'm in any kind of time crunch, something like that. So that's really it. That's really the whole plan for Dreamer into Doer or hashtag did 2020. So do you want to come along with me? I hope so. I'd love for you to come with me. What does 20 minutes a day look like? Well, I'm going to did 2020, one 20 minute chunk at a time. Let's see what it looks like in math. I actually sat down and did the math about this and I'm going to check my notes here and make sure I get this right. You can double check me if you want, but 20 minutes a day equals 140 minutes each week. 140 minutes, that's not very much. That's only 2.3333333 hours per week. That's under two and a half hours. Don't you think you can find an extra two and a half hours somewhere, even if it's just getting up 20 minutes early or staying up 20 minutes late or taking 20 minutes out of your lunch time. I mean, everybody's life is different, right? So I'm home all day long, so it's a little bit easier for me. I know it's a little harder for people that work, and especially if you work outside the home, it's gonna be a little harder. But I think you could carve that out, even if it's two 10 minute bits that you can carve out. So it's just two and a half hours per week. So that 2.3333 hours per week equals just 9.33332 hours per month. Okay, what does that say there? That is just under 10 hours a month. I want that to sink in because that's what when it really, the math started jogging my brain here. Just 10 hours a month? Okay, so 20 minutes a day. Let's take it out to a year. Brings us to 7,320 minutes a year. So we have a leap year in, in 2020, so we have 366 days. So that is just 122 hours all year, or 5.083333 days. That's it. Just a little bit over five days out of your year. You can get those 20 minute chunks. Five days is all it really is, I think. If, I, if my math is wrong, go ahead and let me know. But so let's do the math on screen time. Oh, screen time. Um, my wonderful little iPhone tells me that I average about five hours a day on my devices. Now, before you start clawing at me here about that, I do a lot of work on my phone. In my defense, I do every morning something that's called my morning meditation. It's part of my little I have a little um, artful called Art as Prayer Morning Meditation Ministry. So part of that five hours is me actually creating an artwork every day for that, because I do that every day, every day. I've done that for the past three and a half years. Every single day I have created an artwork, an original artwork from some of my original photography. So 
Okay. So, but five hours a day, Rebecca, good have fun lead days. So five hours a day equals 35 hours per week and 35 hours per week equals 1820 hours per year. That's 75, almost 76 days. Holy moly, 76 days. That's two and a half months on my phone. Ugh. So, okay, I can make some adjustments. When, when that number hit me right between the eyes, I started thinking, okay, we need to get serious about that. Can I afford five days in 2020 to work on my art? Five days. If I can take 75, almost 76 days to work on my phone, I can certainly afford five days to work on my art, right? The second question was, can I move some of those five hours I'm spending of screen time to my studio or my art making time, my creativity? Yeah, I think I can do that. And the third question I need to ask you is, can you afford not to? do that? And your answer might be yes, it might be no. <laughs> so my promise to myself, okay, here it goes. I promise to walk into my studio every day and spend at least 20 minutes creating. 20 minutes, that's all. That's all I have to promise myself. If I want more, I can take it. I'm going to also, and this is what's going to push me out of my bounds, and this is where you are going to hold me accountable. I'm going to create a darn video journal of this journey every single day, and I'm going to share it via social media. That's my accountability step, and I need you to help keep me accountable. If you don't see a video on here every day, call me out on it, ping me, knock on my door and tell me, Rebecca, you promised. You promised yourself and you promised me. So go ahead and do that. I give you full permission to do that. But I also promise myself to grow in new ways. And I want you to do that with me. If I'm willing to get out here and make a silly fool out of myself every day making a video that is going to show me in my studio working on my art, I think you can afford to give me some time too, right? You can afford to get in there and play with me. Just get in the sandbox. I've always called it creative sandbox. Um, so Creativa's creative sandbox. So you can jump in there with me and we can just make the biggest mess that we possibly can do. So I am first, I love books, of course, you know, bookery here. I love mixed media. I do lots of mixed media for the Graphics Fairy and the Graphics Fairy a premium site and some other sites around the internet. And so mixed media is a big part of it. So we're going to be doing mixed media, altered art, uh, books especially, and journaling and bookmaking, all kinds of things like that. You never know what's going to happen in the studio when I'm going to be in there. So I want you to come along with me. I think the first thing I'm going to do on day one video is start thinking about an altered book because I think that's a really neat way to go because there's so many things you can do with just a real book. You don't have to bind it. You don't have to do any of those kind of things, but we can paint our heart out. We can cut, we can paste, we can glue, we can collage, we can mix media, we can learn new things, we can gesso, we can just get in there and have all kinds of fun and all kinds of mess and all kinds of beauty and all kinds of joy, can't we? So come with me, please come with me. This is my invitation to you to come with me. And especially I need you to hold me accountable. And if you want me to hold you accountable, I will be glad to do that too. That little coach side of me will be glad to do that. And the upside is that I'm not charging anything for this. This, this is my gift to you as well as my gift to myself. So I know we are free to give thanks for the newness of life 
given to us by our God. And we're free to begin anew with new days and a renewed spirit in 2020. So come with me and let's open this new decade together by establishing a new habit, uh, a personal daily creative practice in 2020. Establishing a new habit is the hard part. It's not the actual creative activities that is the hard part. A lot of people get that mixed up. They think, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. Well, I can show you what to do and how to do that. But I can't get you into your studio or at your desk or wherever you create art. I can't do that part for you. That's the hard part and that's the part you have to do. But the creative part is the fun part. And that's what usually slows a lot of people down and usually keeps them out of the studio is thinking, oh, what am I going to do? So don't worry about that part. I got that taken care of. I will provide that for you. So I'm going to see you later in the studio for day one for this altered book that we're going to make together. And I'm so excited about this and I hope you are too. So here is me wishing you well, wishing you a happy new year, wishing you joys and blessings and creative time to make your creative spirit fly and flourish in 2020. So may joy be with you all. See you soon for day one in the studio.